right, we're waiting word from the Big Ten and then how Michigan responds. Is Jim Harbaugh going to be on the sidelines this weekend? Does any of this punishment matter or the rumors of it or the possibility? I think it's all, if it happens, it happens in the offseason. But let's bring in Rick Neuheiser, our good buddy, CBS Sports College football analyst, former college coach at UW, also Colorado and UCLA. All right, Rick, what do you think should happen to Jim Harbaugh and Michigan? Uh, I just put this under the category of overzealous, the Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> this is, uh, you got a guy by the name of Connor Stallions who's just super fan, wants to impress the head coach and finds ways to get all kinds of intelligence. The head coach goes, wait a minute, you really can get that stuff? And proves to be very accurate information and you end up hiring him. And the guy went way over his skis and obviously didn't do a very good job of hiding his trail uh, as we're uncovering more and more of this. Yeah, this is just overzealousness 101. What will happen, do you think? Well, you've got a bunch of angry coaches. You've got a real a bunch of angry, an angry mob right now knocking at the door. And, uh, you know, Tony Petiti's in a bind because he's got to prove to these guys that he's going to try to find some measure of justice. And Michigan's going to just lawyer up. This is going to get pushed to the after the season because of all the legal machinations. And uh, I would guess that Jim Harbaugh will be looking for a work in the NFL. And you talked about that a couple of weeks. That's what you thought would maybe be the end result here. But also, you were on, you were coaching, what, three different programs? And did you ever have anybody who would have gone rogue on you and got gathered information that you didn't know about to maybe – help your assistant coaches? Not that I'm aware of. Now, listen, we all, I know there's some pushback now by Michigan that coaches are, you know, conspiring and getting information against Michigan. You'd always get on the phone and ask somebody who's a friend in the business if, if they just played somebody, give me, you know, your tells, right? If it, you're going into a poker game, you want to know what people's uh, tells are. That that happens all the time. But to go to the level that Connor Stallions has apparently gone to, uh, I have never been aware of anything like that. Did you ever get signals? Did you ever get information like that from another coach sharing information like Rutgers, Purdue, and Ohio State are accused of doing? The signals that you would always try to get from opponents is personnel groups. Defensive coordinators are hell-bent to find out what personnel is going into the game, especially with this advent of up-tempo stuff. So if you're changing personnel and you're going from 11 personnel, which means one back and, and uh, one tight end in the game, and you're going to now 10 personnel, taking the tight end out and adding a wide receiver, the, the coordinator, the defensive coordinator, the play caller wants to know that information so that he can give a call that's more in touch with all the the data that you have when in, when they're in 10. So you're always looking to see what signals are going in to communicate that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the role. Like, did Ohio State, Rutgers, and Purdue, what they're accused of, is that illegal? They're, they're, no, what I think they're getting are, the, are, are personnel groupings. I think they're just getting personnel grouping signals. I don't think they're, they're, they have the, uh, the wherewithal to figure out what the play call is. I, I really don't. What, what, uh, what Connor Stallions was doing was taking it to the nth degree and knowing everything there was to know about the stuff, and at least allegedly. And uh, coordinators, it's uh, all the video shows him standing next to the coordinators are waiting for him to say, run, pass pass and what kind of run and pass. And that's a huge advantage. I'm just trying to understand this though, Rick, if I had somebody on my staff who was going to other games, getting information, who is he giving the information to? And how does Jim Harbaugh not know that somebody on his staff is going to scout in advance, maybe be in disguise and giving that information to one of his assistant coaches? I think uh, that Jim did know. I, I think it's implausible for him not to know that this guy has some real information and some important data that can be really useful to the coordinators in their play calls. Uh, and, you know, the fact that he, he was out there doing all that, I don't think Jim wanted to know how he was doing it, but he was certainly, uh, it was useful information, which is why the guy went from super fan to an employee. Talking to Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports College football analyst, former college head coach at uh, Washington, UCLA, and Colorado. What is the policy 
etiquette of ratting out a program. Like if you got information, you know, would you share that with somebody, uh, a reporter or the NCAA, if you knew that they were up to something nefarious? I think what we all would like to say we would do is go straight to the source, which is mean if you had a suspicion that Jim Harbaugh was doing something, you'd go straight to Jim Harbaugh. I know he did that to me. He thought I was he thought I was uh, involved with a recruit uh, at a time where I couldn't be on in, in phone conversation with him. Or I couldn't call the recruit. And he called me out and, and accused me of it. I said, Jim, absolutely not. The kid called me. Uh, it was a kid out of Stockton uh, by the name of Philip Rule, a kind of walk on fullback that, you know, walk ons couldn't get into Stanford. So this was a unique uh, uh guy for him wait so Harbaugh really, calls you and says oh yeah he called me every name in the book saying i was cheating and i said you're absolutely out of your mind i have not i've got all the phone records you can see that phil rule called me wanting to come to ucla but we had it out on the phone there was nothing going back uh give and take <laughs> what what's amazing dan th this this guy went to the lengths of bring all this data we were back in the pack 10 at the time and uh wanted uh, Pete Carroll to stop having the use of all the Pac-12 officials at his practice. He said he only had a budget for, you know, three or four practices a year where the Pac-12 officials, Pac-10 officials at the time would come to his practice. And Pete was having them every day. He could afford to have them every day. And he was going to get this, you know, great uh, favoritism from the officials because he was going to create these relationships. And then Pete raised his hand and said, I was the most penalized team in the league. <laughs> and everybody started laughing. Everybody started laughing. And Jim got so angry. He said, it's the principle of the thing. And it was just like one of these but things. But that's where, what I'm, I'm wondering. His dad yeah. was a legendary coach, by the book coach. Like, that's the thing I keep coming back to with Harbaugh. Um, yeah. Would he have it, it, done this and and maybe embarrassed his dad in the process? I, I guess the ends justify the means. But th th this is wildly embarrassing. Wildly embarrassing because this is a team that frankly doesn't need it. This team is really good. What he's got. As a matter of fact, he couldn't he couldn't stop but tell me in Indianapolis at the uh, Big Ten media days that this is good. This team's going to break the record of Georgia's most draft choices going to the NFL. He thinks it's going to be somewhere in the eighteen to twenty number. Would you rather know what Harbaugh knew or who's the one that started the investigation? <laughs> this is where you, this is the Johnny Cochran. I mean, he's just, he's just, if the glove doesn't fit, right. You've got, you've got a jury looking at something that doesn't have anything to do with this. The bottom line is Connor Stallions was too obvious, but, but somebody had it out for Harbaugh. Oh yeah. That, that, that line's a long line. <laughs> <laughs> that line's a just, long line. Just to now. put you on record, <laughs> you had nothing to do with this. I had nothing okay. to do with it. I just want to make yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. No, you had no knowledge <laughs> of it. But but somebody absolutely not. Somebody gift wrapped this to the NCAA. Oh, without question. Without question. Why? And uh I, obviously they got wind of it. Somehow, some way, there was uh, a tip that this somebody was doing this. Yeah, and but teams don't turn in other teams though, because everybody's oh, cheating, Rick, aren't they? If, if well, no, no, not everybody at this level. That, that's and I'll draw a line there. Everybody's trying to get information, trying to get tells, and if you got a buddy that knows something, you're going to ask what what you know. But no one's going to the lengths that Connor Stallion went, and now finding out that Connor Stallions went from you know the Wizard of Oz overzealous to an employee. Now you're you're substantiating his work, and and there's where you've got an issue. Right. But it writes it writes his own song. I mean, this is going to be a song, Dan, and I'll come back and perform it here at some point. What's it going to be called? Oh, Santa! Oh no, Jimmy's got you in a bind. Are you <laughs> blind? Connor Stallion's trail not hard to find. Santa! Oh no, just play the game of legalese. Bump, bump, bump. Oh, yeah, it's going to ride itself. Thank you, buddy. Good to talk All to you right, again. my friend. Uh, <laughs> he was ready for that. I was just asking the title of the song. But uh, New Weisel, who's given us many, many songs, Born in the SEC, I think might have been the first one. Legendary. But uh, interesting, though, his take that Harbaugh called him when Harbaugh was at Stanford and Rick was recruiting somebody that Stanford was recruiting, and uh, he thought that Jim did some. Jim thought that Rick did something illegal, and then called him up. And New Heisel said, "I didn't call the recruit; he called me." 
and the fact that Jim would call him on that. That's why I keep coming back to this, that if you're Michigan, you don't have to do this. It's like the Houston Astros. Everybody says, you know, hey, they're not cheating now. You didn't have to cheat back then. You were that good.